Okay, uh, thank you so much, Joe. Um, so yeah, my name is Rua. Uh, welcome everybody. Uh, fantastic to see a packed room. A little bit daunting. Um, this is my first WordCamp. Uh, I'm from New Zealand. I'm over here from Dunedin. Um, I don't hate Australia. I used to live in Sydney for a while. Um, kind of enjoyed that. Brisbane's really nice. Uh, so I work for Automatic. Um, I've been working for Automatic for about a year and a half. Um, and I work on WooCommerce.com. So I don't work on WooCommerce, the plugin, uh, and I don't work on WordPress, but I do work on a website that is a WordPress website and uses WooCommerce to sell WooCommerce plugins. Um, so I'm here today because I'm quite excited about Gutenberg. Um, and possibly most of you know this already, but maybe not all of you. Uh, so Gutenberg is the tech behind the brand new block editor that's coming out, uh, that's come out in uh, WordPress 5.0. not going to use the clicker. Um, so just before I get started on the talk proper, um, let's do a little show of hands um, so I can get an idea of where everybody is on their Gutenberg journey. So throw your hands up if you are excited about Gutenberg like I am. Okay, <laughs> thank you for those of you who are. Um, so now throw your hands up if you are using Gutenberg for posts or pages, uh, not all of them, but just any post or page on a real site. Okay, great, similar number of people. Um, so the last one, extra for experts, um, throw your hands up if you have built custom blocks or you're playing around with custom blocks right now. Okay, this is perfectly pitched. Uh, so this is a, a warm up talk to get you excited about building your own custom blocks, among other things. Okay, so what is it that gets me so excited about Gutenberg? Um, it's because you can build a block for anything. Uh, so I really love the idea that WordPress um, and sites built on WordPress can become more diverse, more interactive and more engaging. So it's not just about blogs and it's not just about text with um, media embedded, it's about much more than that. So Gutenberg, or the Block Editor, is a, is a platform that we can use to build those experiences from richer units. So we have had richer units of content in WordPress for quite some time. This is a short code, which I'm sure you all recognize. It's a short code for a gallery. Um, so you can do a lot with short codes right now. Um, but I think with Gutenberg, we can, we can really build on this and make it a much better experience for authors and build some cool new things as well. So here's what a gallery looks like in Gutenberg. I'm sure you've all seen this already. It's much more WYSIWYG, it's much more live. Um, and so this talk is kind of centered around that kind of transformation. It's about making really nice interfaces for your data, for your authors, for your sites that really um, are close to what you're trying to express. So if you're building a site right now or if you're working with a client and there's something particular about that application or the market that they're in, um, think about that as we go through the, the dry technical details of the talk and hopefully you can find some things that you can use this for. So uh, Gutenberg, as we all know, is the block editor, um, but it's more than just the block editor. Um, it's actually a code library full of useful things that you can use. Uh, and so I'm talking about one specific thing in particular today in this talk. So I'm talking about components. So before we launch into that, let's talk about what components are. So I've got this definition out of the React documentation. Um, and so components let you split your user interface into independent, reusable pieces. And this is the most important part for me. Uh, and they let you think about each piece in isolation. So you can break down your user interface or your software into smaller chunks that you can then trust and rely on to do a particular job. So what are we actually talking about? <laughs> Components might be a bit abstract. Um, so in this component library inside Gutenberg, there are some things that you've seen before. Things like buttons uh, and controls for collecting user input, like text edits, date pickers, things like that. Uh, there's also things like menu bars, and um, you can also have components that are made up of other components to build a more rich unit. 
So we're going to look at some examples in a minute of these. Before we do that, I'm just going to do a very, very tiny introduction to React. So um, maybe another quick show of hands. Who's heard of React? Who's scared of React? Yeah, I mean, I'm comfortable with React now, but it still scares me. <laughs> um, so this is what React really is at its core. So this is a JavaScript function, and in comes some props, some little bits of data. So think about this, like what's the data that your site's all about? So in this case, our prop is a name, and it's Muriel, which I believe is a traditional Australian name. <laughs> and so that comes in, and then our component spits out some markup, and that's, hi Muriel. So that's, that's what a, a React component is. So hopefully um, that makes React a little bit more um, friendly, and you'll see this pattern over and over again when you're browsing through the Gutenberg source code or when you're building your block. Okay, so let's start off with a really simple component. This is the um, button component inside WordPress. Um, so I'm showing the code on screen here for these things. Don't worry about that. Um, if you like looking at the code and reading what's there, then feel free. Um, all this code is lifted directly out of the Gutenberg project, so it's all there on GitHub, and you can go and check it out later. It's just to illustrate what I'm talking about. So we can see that this button um, has props, those green things, um, for different kinds of uh, behavior and uh, properties that you might want. So this one here is a small button, because it says, is small. Um, and it's also got some other props to control its behavior and to show a value. And the label for the button um, is the text that is in between the opening and closing tag. So very similar to HTML. Here's a more interesting component. Um, so this one gives you a lot more out of the box. Uh, this is the form token field. And so this is what would be used in a post for selecting tags. But maybe with sites you're building, you can think of other things you might want to use this for. Um, and it gives you all that behavior of adding new tags, killing tags, all out of the box in this nice, clean little bit of markup. And here's a much more rich, detailed component. So this is a media placeholder, and this is what you um, uh, present to an author when you've got a block that needs a piece of media, and it's flexible. It can be used in different blocks in different ways. So this example here is from the media and text block, which is reasonably new. It wasn't in 5.0, I don't think. It was soon after. And so it's got guidance for the author about what to do next, and you pass that in as a property. And what's really cool about this and what's really powerful about components is that within this um, in innocuous looking markup here is all of the code to handle a file upload, uh, making sure that's the right kind of file, um, and that's all very easy to express what you need. Um, so we've got here what kind of file types we accept, um, and it's just going to take care of that for us. So that's a, a little dive into some components as they're used inside Gutenberg. So you're probably wondering, um, what can I do with these? Where can I use these components? Um, and there's a couple of answers there. Um, obviously, you can build your own custom blocks, and if you're going to do that, you're going to be right in there, and all these components are going to be really useful to you. But you can actually use components from Gutenberg for other things as well. Um, so the idea is, with this component library, that you can use it for building experiences in WP Admin. So if you're building a plugin that has an interface for your site administrators or your authors that might be nothing to do with content, it might be something else to do with your site, you can use these components to build that as well. Um, and I think that's going to really be uh, pivotal for WordPress going forward to make the admin experience much more um, targeted at what people need it to do um, and be able to focus in people's um, experience on what they need to be able to do. So here's an example of that. Um, so I wasn't personally involved in this, um, but WooCommerce has a brand new um, sort of child plugin that's going to be part of Core soon um, called WooCommerce Analytics. And it's been built using um, WordPress components and Gutenberg tech from the ground up. But it's, it's nothing to do with the content. It's nothing to do with the block editor. It's just about understanding what's happening with your sales. And that's been built using WordPress components. Um, so that's an example of the kind of fun you can have, um, depending on what your domain is and what 
what you need, could use this for. So you can see there an old friend, we've got our form token field is being used there, and we can see a bunch of other custom components that that team's built specifically for this. So, let me just switch out to my demo now. I believe that's next. Yep. So, um, so now we're going to switch focus a little bit. That was a bit of a talk about technology, um, and so the real reason I did this talk is that I wanted an excuse to play with this and make something fun for myself. Um, I like music, I like electronic music in particular, I like all music, but uh, electronic music is what I'm obsessed with more. Um, so I thought, what if I could build blocks that enabled you to add a soundtrack to a page so that you could have a richer experience when you're learning about, say, music genres, or you, know, you might use this for other things as well. So, I'm not sure if this is going to... Okay, so it's coming out of the computer right here. Can you hear that reasonably? Yeah? Okay, good. And you can hear me as well? <laughs> good. So um, at the top of the page I've got a play button block, and then I've got a block that's a, um, an audio loop, and this one is a very, very seminal classic techno track. And then as we scroll down the page, it switches over to uh, another example of techno music from a bit more current. And uh, if the person's reading around in this page, learning different things, it's crossfading between those two as they go. Thanks very much. So that's the, that's the experience that I wanted to build. Um, and Gutenberg was the tool that I did use to, to build that. So. I think we'll just go back to the presentation now. Um, so that's up live if you want to have a play with it. There's a few other pages to play to look at. Um, okay, so how did I do this? <laughs> um, so I'm going to show you another thing that um, is really useful if you're getting started with this, or if you're quite experienced in this area, it's just really useful anyway. So this is the WordPress scripts package. And so what this gives you is a way to um, get all the dependencies you need to build on Gutenberg as a library and to build a custom block um, and to have one dependency for all that and not have to wrangle all the different versions of things. Um, obviously with JavaScript and NPM, things can get um, quite out of date quite quickly. It's very hard to stay on top of. So this helps you with that. Um, and it includes Babel, so you can write modern JavaScript, which is much more nice to work with. It feels much more close to um, traditional programming. Uh, and there's also linting tools to keep your code standardized. You'll see here there's a start script, um, which you use when you're developing, and it'll uh, watch your files as you edit on them, and uh, it'll build as you go, and that'll allow you to iterate quickly and have fun uh, building as you go. And when you are done, there's a build script which will build a production version of your plugin, which you can then release out to your customers. So yeah, have a look at that. Uh, it might be a little bit alien right now, but if you're going to start down this journey, it's a fantastic place to start. And there's lots of docs about it on uh, the WordPress.org website. So uh, a bit more detail about how I built my thing. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, so I used a placeholder, um, so we were talking about placeholders before. So when you first drag out the loop block into the um, editing area, uh, you haven't got any audio in it, and so you need to choose some media. And so that's what I've uh, used the placeholder block for. So I've given a little icon that looks like a record, came out of dash icons, um, and then I've given the instructions to the um, user, you need to pick an audio file here. Again, all this code's on GitHub, this is all open source, so don't worry about it too much right now. If you are interested, you can have a good look later, or you can contact me, and we can discuss. Um, so, there's a toolbar on each block inside Gutenberg, which you've probably seen. And so the way you build up that toolbar is you use um, components for that as well. Um, so, in our toolbar, we have two buttons. Uh, one's to hide the block from the front end of the site, so that's just sound, and you can't see any evidence of the sound. That's that little I button. And for that one, we're passing properties directly into the toolbar component. Um, we've also got a media upload um, button, 
which will make sure that we've got an audio file because it's got a media upload check component around it. And that's going to handle all of our media upload or selecting from the WordPress media library. So you get to build on uh, all of the lovely stuff that's in the platform that we've got in a nice, clean way. Uh, so the other block that I built is this play button block, and you can have as many of these on the page as you want, um, allowing the user to start and stop the soundtrack. And it's got a very basic setting. It's got the tempo for how fast you want the music to play. Um, and so that's in the sidebar at the right of the editor. And so to do that, we use an inspector controls component. And then inside that, we have a panel body, which gives us a little nice place to put controls, um, which can be collapsed away when uh, the user doesn't need to see it anymore. Um, and then within that, we've got a range control, which is a way of setting a number between two values. And you can see here we pass in our playback um, tempo attribute from our block metadata. And then when the user slides it around, that'll get saved back in to the attributes. OK, so that wraps up the talk. Quite a rapid pace. <laughs> so there's a bunch of links there. Um, definitely come and talk to me if any of this stuff is interesting or confusing to you. Um, and of course, working for Automatic, it's wonderful. I'd encourage everybody to, if you're interested in that, uh, find out about it. It's a really great place to work. Um, and yeah, there's the uh, repo for the audio blocks up there on GitHub. So thank you very much. <laughs> Do we have time for questions? I think, I think we have time for maybe a couple of questions. So we are running about 10 minutes behind. Uh, so we'll try and keep them nice and short and sweet. Um, and I'm sure that Rua won't mind answering your questions after um, during the all day, break. All weekend. All day, all day, he says. So hold him to that. Uh, so do we have any questions? Who wants to start us off? Everyone just really wants their coffee right now. Come on, I know someone's got a burning question. Yes, can we grab a mic up for this gentleman up here? Thanks. Um, I built blocks using ACF. I'm not experienced with React. So any benefit that you get from React, from working with React at its core versus using ACF to build in your own blocks? That's a pretty good question. So I'm not hugely familiar with ACF. In fact, there's going to be a talk that I'm going to go to later that I'm going to find all about that. Um, I guess uh, if that's working for you, that's great. Um, you know, keep doing it. Uh, there's a couple of benefits that I could see from going with the kind of more direct approach. One is that you're kind of upskilling in an area that um, seems to be taking over the whole world right now. So the more you can learn and be comfortable with React, that might pay off with dividends in other places. And as far as keeping your site lean and your code base focused on exactly what you want to deliver, then going straight to the platform that's built into WordPress is always going to save you know, bytes on your server, parse time, compile time, uh, and runtime JavaScript when you're um, editing in the block editor. The more things you have running, the slower that experience is going to be for your authors. So um, that could be a, a factor. But yeah, thanks for the question. Awesome. Any other questions? Going once, going twice. Yes, we've got a gentleman up here in the middle. Can we get a microphone to this gentleman here, please? <laughs> oh, there we go. Um, there were a lot of references in your code to things that weren't previously defined. <laughs> where, where do you find all this stuff? Yeah, so I've taken uh, very tiny snippets of code out. Um, so yeah, that code all came from the Gutenberg repo on GitHub, which is right there. So take a photo of the slide if you're, if you're curious. Um, I will put up a blog post about this at some point. Um, and are we making slides available to people? I no. believe. So, yeah. yeah. Find me. Um, I'm Hazari. Um, anywhere on the internet is Hazari. That's me. Um, or cartoonbeats.com. And we'll, we'll show you. But yeah, so all the code is in the Gutenberg project. There is much more to it. I wanted to present clean things that um, had missing references, as you say. Um, yeah, and the other code was in the audio blocks repo that's um, very small and fun to browse. It's a little hack prototype. And just by the way, that demo is up live as well. That URL is easy to remember. It's camp.cartoonbeats.com. So feel free to have a play around with it or stick it on at the next party you're at. 
<laughs> awesome. Uh, big round of applause for Ruel. Thanks for starting us off. Thank you.